was going to look here at action potentials in neurons. Um, it, it's not a difficult thing, I don't think. It's it's something you can learn just by going step by step by step. It's um, yeah, it's a bit like a flowchart one, really. Uh, but there are a few things that can cause problems, particularly um, with the terminology, which is perhaps where people um, come a cropper. So there are going to be three things to be aware of here. Um, the first one is going to be our sodium potassium um, ion pump. Now this is just going to stay switched on all the way through. It's not going to do anything different, it's just going to keep doing this. And what it does is it pumps three sodium ions out of the cell and at the same time pumps two potassium ions in. So we've got more potassium, uh, sorry, we've got more positive ions coming out of the cell than we have coming in. This will be sitting in the membrane. Okay, and what this is doing is it's maintaining a concentration gradient. And the reason this is important, um, in, in fact, you know, all your cells will have a different, uh, will have a concentration gradient across them. It'll be more of one ion on one side than the other. Um, it's just that in neurons, um, and in, in the action of neurons particularly, um, those cells can change the potential difference. They can alter it, which is known as an action potential which is where we'll come to, but this thing here helps to maintain and there's going to be lots of potential differences here I'm afraid, there's quite a few to, to remember but this is maintaining what we call the resting potential, I'm just going to write PD, potential difference save me writing out, that's an acceptable um, abbreviation so sodium ion pump is just going to say switched on all the way through, it's not going to do anything else, it will just sit there and it'll keep doing it um, it does require uh, energy release from ATP, the hydrolysis of ATP to ADP um, and so the, you'll find quite a few mitochondria sitting in the axon of neurons, they're quite metabolically active. Okay, So that's the first bit to think about. The other two are related and they are both what you'd call voltage gated channels, voltage gated ion channels. What this basically means is they are like a, a switch or a door that is switched on or off at a different um, voltage, a different potential difference. So we've got sodium gated ion channels and we've got potassium voltage gated ion channels. And they both turn on and off at different voltages. Okay. So we've got our three things here. This one that we can now ignore because it's just going to sit there pumping its stuff away. Um, it's these two. When do they open? When do they close? Because that is what's going to um, create our um, our action potential. So um, this bit I don't think is very well explained in the book. So I'll just take a, a slight diversion here. Um, all of this is going to start off, of course, with some kind of receptor cell that is stimulated in some way. It could be a receptor cell in the eye, in the retina. Um, it could be one in the skin, like a Paxinian corpuscle. Something that is going to get a stimulus, pressure, light photons hitting it, whatever it may be, and it will convert that into electrical energy, a transducer. Okay. Um, it's also important to get here that idea of summation. And this was the idea that in order to get um, a sufficient um, level of stimulus, you can either have spatial um, summation, where you'd need, you know, for example, lots of um, receptors stimulating perhaps one um, one neuron, all, all synapsing with one neuron, um, or the temporal summation, which is the idea that it's not enough just to get a signal, an impulse, you have to get you know, a certain frequency of them, you have to have a certain number in a certain amount of time, that's what the temporal bit measures to time. Okay. Now, the, the reason that's important is when you look at this, um, when you look at these graphs, and uh, this is the, uh, down here would be the potential difference in millivolts, and there's, there's our zero. Um, in your books it refers to it as minus 65. I'll come back to that in a second. Just put my plus 40 in there. Um, and it refers to this as a resting potential. Now you will see in various other sources, books and things online, sometimes you'll see the resting potential as minus 70 millivolts. Sometimes you'll see it as minus 60. Um, they go with minus 65 in the books. Let's stick with, with what they're saying. I prefer the minus 70, but there we go. <clears throat> okay, so normally in a cell, in the um, in a neuron, let's just draw one here, because of that sodium-potassium pump, 
we've got lots of positive charges outside in the extracellular fluid and not so many on the inside. Okay, so we would say that just as you can say that that's more positive than the inside, you can say the inside is more negative. It doesn't matter that there aren't any negative ions there, there are, but we, we, we're going to ignore them. But we'd say that it's negative compared to or with respect to the outside, minus 65 compared to the outside. So that's where that number comes from. That's our resting potential. Okay. Now, to come back to this idea of submersion, if our, um, if our receptor, whatever it may be, isn't giving us sufficient uh, uh, sufficient impulses, whether that's enough of them spatially or, or, or frequency, it never quite fires the neuron. It just sort of you know, just changes a bit. And what's actually happening is here, a few sodium channels are opening, but not many. What we need is the magic and it's about minus 55 millivolts actually, it's called a threshold potential. And if you reach the threshold potential, um, it suddenly jumps up like that. And what's happening here is, at that point, that's when all of these sodium channels really start to open. So that's when boom, they switch on. So we could say, our sodium uh, voltage gated sodium channels come on at about minus 55 millivolts. Okay. All these sodiums come rushing in through diffusion through these open channels, they can get through the membrane now until it hits about plus 40 and at plus 40 millivolts those channels basically shut off. So the sodium channels open down here, voltage gated sodium channels open about minus 55, about plus 40 it stops because they shut. However at that point the potassium voltage gated channels open and there's more potassium on the inside than the outside because we were pumping this stuff in so the potassium goes rushing out okay um, now that will take our potential difference back down I'll do the the polarization stages in a moment so uh, let's just put the sodium channels up there close off sodium channels uh, potassium channels sorry open it comes all the way down here now somewhere down here our potassium channels close off they actually tend to overshoot a little bit so they go maybe down to I don't know, minus 70 it's not very clear on there but they do they go below that resting potential before it comes back and here what's happening is our um, neuron is being reset <coughs> using this um, sodium potassium pump which remember just stayed there doing its stuff all the way through and this whole process takes um, you know we're looking in terms of milliseconds I think it's about point uh, maybe about three milliseconds for that whole thing three thousandths of a second okay so from resting potential to resting potential okay so I did say I'd mention um, the different polarization states so I'll just redraw this for a second just to give us a bit, a bit of clarity again but it's the same thing so here we're at the resting potential this is sometimes referred to as a generator potential Okay, that's been generated from the um, from the receptor cells. We reach the threshold potential, and this is the point where the um, cell depolarizes. So it's polarized at the moment, at the resting potential. It depolarizes up to forty. So I'll just put a D for depolarize. As it comes back down again, that's called repolarizing. You get it to where it was, and that little drop down there is hyperpolarization. Hyper meaning above and you might say oh well it's gone below. Yes but we're dealing with negative numbers it's gone more negative um, so it's not hypopolarization it's hyperpolarization um, and this bit here um, is sometimes also referred to, I'll come to this when we do propagation as the refractory period when I can spell it right there we go um, and this is a period when you can't stimulate the cell. Doesn't matter if any more generator potentials come. While it's down here, sort of gone below that resting potential, you cannot stimulate the nerve, that you can't do anything with it, sorry, with the neuron, you can't do anything with it. Okay, so that's the refractory period um, in here until it's got back to its resting state. Okay, so if you just remember it in terms of um, sodium potassium pumps um, and these voltage gated, ion channels I should have put on here you know the, the potassium channel switches on or the open I should say about plus 40 um, 
uh, it gets a bit awkward when he gets down here. Are they actually shutting down at sort of minus 70? Yeah, they sort of are. I think you just stick with they close. Um, ideally, they close at you know, minus 65 and wouldn't even get this hyper polarization, but they don't. It's just how it works. Um, so, you know, these things are going to start closing off again once you're down to about minus 70 millivolts. So, it's just the interplay of these two things. Um, this bit here we would refer to as the action potential. That's when the potential difference is really changing across the membrane. I know it's changing here and here, um, but this is the bit that's the actual uh, part that's used to um, transmit the impulses in neurons, that's where we'll come to. Next.